Okay, a lot of viewers seemed really interested in this, which is doing chroma keying, uh, blue screen or green screening out the background. Um, and I'm going to be using Blender 2.66 here. This is important that you're using uh, the most recent version of Blender because the tool that I'm going to be using in here is not available in, in earlier versions. I'm not sure exactly what version it came in. I know that I also have a copy of 2.63 and it's not in there. Uh, and there are chroma keying tools in older version of Blender, but this one I feel uh, is a lot simpler and, and, and does a better job. Although I might do another tutorial for older versions. I don't, I don't know. It may not be worth it since everyone will have this in a few months and you can get it right now at the website, blender.org. Anyway, I'm using Blender 2.66. If what I'm showing you here is missing in yours, it's because you're using a different version. First thing to do anytime you're working with video in Blender is go to your rendering uh, tab here and set uh, your frame rate and your resolution, or at least your frame rate, because Blender doesn't go by seconds and minutes. Uh, maybe there's a way to make it, but as far as I know, it only works with frames. So let's say you had a five minute video at 15 frames a second, and you bring it in here and you have it set to 30 frames a second, that five minute video is actually going to turn into a two and a half minute video for you, or the other way around. So just make sure whatever your, your camera is set to, set the frame rate here before you start importing videos and start doing work. It's gonna save you a lot of headache later on. Um, so now that we got that figured out, let's go up here to our little uh, settings tab and we're going to go down to uh, compositing. If you've never worked with the compositor before, I recommend watching some basic videos on it because it, it can get confusing if you've never worked with a compositor before uh, with nodes and stuff like that. So I check nodes, I'm going to check background, I'm also going to check auto render and I'm going to right click and delete that render layer because we're not working with the 3D objects at all here so we don't need that. I'm going to hit and make sure you have your cursor hovered over here hitting keys in different areas. Well you should know the basics of Blender before you start this tutorial but hovering over this view, the compositor view up here, the node editor, hit shift A and say import and we're or sorry input and we're going to say movie clip. Now I'm going to say open and I'm going to go where my movie clip is. I'm going to click this little uh, button up here to bring up the thumbnail view and I'm going to choose this video of me here in front of the green screen. I'm going to click open clip and there it is. Okay, so now at this point I can connect straight to our compositor there and if I hit F12 down here you'll see I can scroll out. Uh, that's the first shot of the video which is me pressing the record button. Uh, at this point, I'm going to hit Shift A and say Output and bring in a viewer, which is going to end up in the background because we've checked this backdrop checkbox here. So if we connect this to here, boom. I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to zoom out. And you can also hit Alt V to zoom in on that image. Okay, so now that we have our background view there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and go down to mat. And once I said, once again, I said there's lots of uh, matting options in here for cutting out backgrounds in Blender. Some of them have been around, some of them are new. What we're going to go to is keying, not keying screen, just keying. And that brings up this big long node here. I'm gonna drop it in there and it will connect. And right away you see that my eyes and my shirt disappear because by default it's screening, meaning it's using black as its color it's going to remove. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on the color, the key color, choose the little dropper. I'm going to choose a green somewhere in the middle here because my lighting is not perfect. The better your lighting, the easier this is going to be for you. Um, I find even with little wrinkles, wrinkles are less of a problem than uh, having even lighting. But I just have one light in this shot shooting up from the side so it's brighter on the right side than the left. I'm going to click somewhere in the middle. And you can see right away it does a pretty good job of masking out all of this area here. You can see a bluish color over here. That's area it has not completely masked out yet. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to center click and drag that stuff out of the way, but I still have the keying node clicked. You can see it's highlighted in red there. And since that's highlighted, the same tools that are in that node are over here on the right hand side. So now I can see the, the image better while I am messing with these options over here. And what I'm going to do here is, well, let's throw a background image in the background because it's, it's easier to see uh, what you're doing because I, I have messed with it like this before, getting it all looking nice. Then I throw an image in the background and realize it's not quite right. So 
let me shift A. I'm going to choose another input, and I'm just going to throw a still image in the background. So I'll say image, open. Uh, I'll go to uh, where I have images. Once again, I'll do thumbnails, and I will scroll down here. I'm just going to choose a picture, a still image that my wife took of a deer in our front yard. I'll click on that, open image. And I'll just connect that straight to our renderer here for a second to show you something. So the output image to the input on the compositor there. Now you'll notice if you look at the little thumbnail here, we have a full shot of the deer, but our render is only uh, a headshot. The reason for that is this image by default is a lot bigger than the 1080p that we have set in our resolution for our project here. That's not a problem. That's another reason we should set our default resolution initially. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to go down to Distort, and I'm going to go Scale. I'm going to drop that in there so that it's connected through. And instead of relative, where we can adjust the size, one being uh, the full size, I'm just going to choose this drop down and choose render size. And that will automatically set that image, if, as long as you're grabbing the output from here, to our render size. Uh, if you have a video that is different than the render size you want, you would do the same thing to the video movie clip up here. But both this and my project are 1080p, so that is not an issue right now. Um, so now that we have that scaled option, I'm going to move this over here. In fact, I'm going to minimize this. And I am going to hit Shift A again. And I am going to bring in a uh, color, and I'm going to say Alpha Over. And here's our Alpha Over. Now, this is one of the many situations where uh, Blender kind of does things backwards than what you would expect. Now, if you're working with a traditional um, track editor, this video of me would be the top track, and this image of the deer would be the bottom track, since the image of me should be on top. But Blender is backwards in that, in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, the output of my video of me to the bottom, and the image of the deer to the top. And then I'm going to connect the output of that to the view and to the compositor so we don't forget to do that later on. And right away with the with the little the, the default settings there after choosing the green, we got a pretty good uh, background image there, but if we uh, we notice that the deer is kind of bluish. So what we're going to do, let me maximize this for a second. You can see we have three outputs here. Let me zoom in here three outputs here. We have the image, the mat, and the edge. We're going to take the mat and we're going to connect that to the FAC input there. And that will give us a nice crisp background there. Uh, and what I'm going to do again is I'm going to minimize all this. I'm going to move it out of the way. And we still have, since we have the keying node selected, you can see it orange there. We still have the tools off to the right here. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys, and I'm going to jump ahead in the video. And actually, I wanted to show you more, but I had a, a pretty good uh, results <laughs> right there. Um, that uh, not much for me to do after choosing the color there, although there are a lot of options here. So, but if we do look, I think my shirt is a little off. Oops, that's not what I meant to click there. Um, yeah, you can see some speckling in my shirt. You can see through. So let's let's do let's do adjust some coloring here. Um, I'm going to adjust uh, basically the black clipping. If I turn that up, it's going to show more and more of the black through the shirt. So I'm going to turn that down all the way in this case, and turn the white clipping down a little bit. And right there, because I had a nice clean green background. I am pretty much done with the configuration there. In a minute, I'm going to bring a video clip that isn't as well uh, green screen in the background, and I do a lot of moving, so I'll get more into these tools here then. But we're not completely done yet, because one, this video um, is much longer than 250 frames. If you look at our frame range here, frame 1 to 250, that's not long enough. So here, I'll hit... Um, shift right arrow and that brings us to our last frame in the project but if I keep hitting uh, right arrow after that you see the video keeps going and that's because the video once again is longer than 250 frames so all we have to do is change this end frame here 
to be whatever the last frame in our video that we want. Um, but how long is this video? There's lots of ways to figure that out. Um, but to do it within Blender, uh, I'm going to show you one of many ways, but this is how I normally do it. We still have our default cube selected in the 3D view here. I'm going to go up here to textures. It already has a default texture. I'm going to click on type. I'm going to choose image or movie, open, and I'm going to go and choose that same movie clip right here, open image. And I can see right here that it is 366 uh, uh, sorry, 3,665 frames. Um, so I'm just going to set this for now to uh, 3,000 whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, I can at least figure out where I want. I can render out the whole thing and then cut it in another video editor later on because I know at the end of this video I'm going to walk up and turn off the camera. So I'm just going to set that. But that's how you find out how long the video is, and if you just set that last frame to that, or within a few frames of that, uh, you should be good. And but we now currently have our project, uh, you know, green screened the render length right. But now we also have to set our output to be a video. Um, by default, I've already changed my default settings to XVID, but you have some presets here. A lot of people like H.264. I sometimes use that, but mostly I use XVID, and that's just me. Uh, and then I'm going to come down here to encoding, and I'm going to choose the default for XVID. And I'm probably going to turn the bitrate up to anywhere from 8,000 to 12,000. Um, so that's great. We got that. But uh, we don't have audio by default because the, the compositor doesn't have any audio options. Um, so what we're going to need to use is the video editor here. So you can either render this out, bring it into another video editor, and drop the audio from the original video onto it. Or you can do it right here in Blender using the video editor, which used to be called the sequencer, and still is in some places, as you'll see in a minute. But once I have that selected in there, I'm going to click Add. I'm going to go Movie. And we're in the folder here already, and this is the movie clip right there. Over here, you have Starting Frame. That's where it's going to place the video. Set that to 1. Um, if you forget to do that, you can always drag and drop it after you import it. We'll say add movie strip. And here's our movie strip, but we don't need the movie clip of it. We only need the audio part. And once again, this is another place where Blender is kind of backwards from what you would think. We got two tracks here. One's a video track and one's an audio track. Most video editors, the video track goes on top and the audio track on the bottom. Blender is backwards. The bottom blue track here is actually the video. So I'm just going to select that and delete it because we don't need it. So now we just have our audio track here. Almost all set. Uh, if we go back to uh, our compositing view here, we have our render settings. Um, by the way, if you look under um, post-processing, you'll see by default compositing and sequencer is checked. So it will composite and then use the audio from the sequencer. That should already be set. But one more thing we need to do down here in our encoding is set the audio codec. By default is none. Set it to whatever audio format you want. I'm just going to choose MP3. You can choose the uh, bit rate here. Now you're set to go. Give it a video. Give your video name. I'll call it test.avi. And uh, I don't want to render out the whole thing right now. Um, but that's what you would do. And then you just hit animate. And it should create yourself an AVI with the audio and the screen background and the background image there. Um, but once again, that was a pretty easy job because I had a pretty good green background there. I'm going to show you another one that has a decent background, a few wrinkles in it, uh, but I'm moving around a lot. So I have a lot of blurriness in my hand, which will allow me to use a lot more of these tools. But that's the basic concept of that. I'm just going to say File, New. Um, so basically, if, if you got lost there, I'm going to do everything again right now with a different video clip. Once again, make sure your project is set to what your video is going is you're bringing in is. I have it set to 30. I actually think my camera's recording at 29.97, so um, I'll set it to that. Uh, if you're a little bit off like that, it's not a huge deal unless it's a really long video clip. Um, I'm going to then choose up here and go to compositing, uh, node. I'm going to use the backdrop. I'm going to auto render. I am going to delete this render layer. I'm going to move this compositing over here. Shift A up here, input, movie clip, open. 
go to where your movie clip is. I'm going to click this button up here to see the thumbnails. And I'm going to choose this clip of me. Put it there. And I'll also say input at this time. And once again, you can put another video in the background if you want, but I'm just going to do a still image. I'm going to open and I am going to choose an image. I'll just choose another one of that deer, whatever. Open. Once again, uh, the image here I know is larger than my uh, project size, so I'm going to say uh, Shift A, go down to Distort, and I'm going to say Scale. Connect this to here, this to our render there. Once again, if I hit F12 now, you'll see that the image is cropped, but if I change relative to render size, it automatically makes that image our render size. And I could do the same thing for this video if it was not already at 1080p. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to say matte keying. Once again, not keying screen, but keying. I'm going to drag that up here. I actually did not want to connect that there. I want to connect this video to the image and disconnect that picture of the deer. So at this point, once again, by default, it's keying out the black in my shirt. I'm going to say key color. So click on that white box there choose the dropper and I'm going to choose some middle green there. Um, this picture also, after watching this video, I realized I needed a haircut. <laughs> right back there I have like a little mullet going on, which also made it a little bit harder to key out. Um, so I fixed my hair since then, but uh, we still need to adjust all this. So once again, uh, the green over here was a better green because that's where my light was. It was a little bit darker over here. Uh, let's just uh, go ahead and um, for right now, we'll minimize that. Hit Shift A and I'm going to say color, alpha over. I'm going to choose the picture of the deer, even though it's the background, to the top box. The image from our key to the bottom box, and if I maximize this out, the MAT output, M-A-T-T-E, to the FAC input there. Uh, and I'm also going to hit Shift A, choose an output of Viewer, which we already have checked back down here, Backdrop. If you don't check that, you will not see what you connect to here. But if I do right now, boom, there's our image. I'll hit V a few times to shrink it down. Select the keying and minimize it. And I'm just going to drag. Oh, wait, I did not mean to drag the image there. I meant to drag the alpha over to there. I'm also going to do the same thing to the compositor so I don't forget because I tend to do that. And I'm going to drag. Oh, I'm going to make sure I have the keying selected so I have the tools over here. So once again, you can do all this right in there. But just to see the image better, I'm going to select that, drag it over. And I'm even going to hit Control up arrow to make this portion of the screen uh, full screen. So make sure you have your arrow over the portion you want and hit control up. So now we can see pretty good right here what we got going on. And right here, once again, out of the box, uh, we got some pretty decent uh, uh, effects here or uh, results here. I'm going to turn the white down a little bit because if you look right here, you can see some speckling. You can see the grass behind my shirt. I'm going to turn the white down a little bit. And I'm going to turn the black up a little bit. And you'll see... Um, right here, the hardest part of this particular image is if you look at my hair there. Once again, I've fixed my hair there. But if I turn the black all the way up, you can see that right there. So I'm going to try to get a good result right there because that's the, my worst part of this picture. But once again, if I uh, go up a number of frames, um, until I start moving my hands, and you'll see what I'm talking about when I get there. I'm not exactly sure where it is in the video. It's near the end. So, so far we're looking like we're getting good results. Okay, so right here is what I'm talking about. My hands are moving, so they're kind of blurry. Ways to fix this, better lighting so you can use a quicker shutter speed, maybe a higher frame rate camera might get better results there. Um, but you can still see kind of green there. And actually, what I have right now is actually looking pretty good. It doesn't look that great in a still image, but faster moving image, uh, it may be less noticeable. Um, no, it will be less noticeable. 
Uh, but you also can see my hair is a little messed up right there. So let's see if I turn black up, you can see that's actually making things worse. So black clipping, let's put that back towards the middle there. Um, one thing I found, I think, with this particular image is post blur, or I'm sorry, pre blur. I can turn that up and you can see if I put it, let me put it back to zero here. It's going to like blur the edges before it starts processing it. And that trims away some of it. Um, I can also change the screen balance. If I turn that up, it's getting larger there. If I turn it down, I think that, yes. So I think turning it down in this case, it's a little bit better. Uh, don't want to do it too much because you don't want a stiff edge there. Um, basically, <laughs> play with these options. If you've got a good green background, you won't have to do too much. you got your feathering option, which is something you don't want to use too much of, but is, I think, an essential part of keying out the background. That's something, if you watched my... Uh, preview of this tutorial, I tried doing uh, keying in Caden Live, and it has a green screen option, but has no feather options. It, it Basically, it cuts the color out and gives you a variance like the screen balance here. It doesn't give you any of these blur options, feathering options, black and white clipping, at least not in that tool. I don't know if there's other tools you can use in conjunction with it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to turn, I'll turn this up to 20. The uh, the pre blur, but once again, it's going to depend on your image. I'll go a few frames. Now, it's still obvious that I'm superimposed here, uh, mainly due to uh, the fact that the lighting is completely different. Really, if you want a realistic uh, merger of two images, you're going to have to get similar similar lighting. Uh, the one picture is outside in mid-afternoon, the other one's inside during the evening. Uh, using really uh, a cheap little light on the ground and just my living room lights, that's why I kind of have an orangish tinge. So get lighting similar will help uh, make sell the effect. If you don't have that, then you can do color corrections, but I'm not great at that myself. Um, but I would definitely take some probably some red out of that this video of me if I wanted to make it look like I was really here um, and probably turn up the blue tones in my face a little bit it would probably be the basics of what I would do but uh, again uh, once again you know the blurring hands you can still see the green screen a little bit because you're gonna get that with the blurring but it's really not that bad and considering we're looking at this frame by frame right now and it's actually 30 frames a second it's it's actually gonna be pretty good results um, Right there, I think my hand actually got close to the screen and, and I got my shadow on there and that's why you can see that. Uh, so again, uh, to get this ready, I'm gonna hit control down arrow to get out of full screen mode there. Uh, we're going to want to go into our video editor. We're going to add a uh, movie. We're going to choose the clip that we're using, which is uh, in this case, this one. I'm going to either set it to one here. If you forget to set it to frame one there and you import it, just hit G for grab and move it on down until you see that you're at frame one. And you can delete this bottom track, which is the video track, because we're not using the video here. We're using the video from the compositor. So there's our audio. Set uh, your, your project frame rate. I'm just going to say... Um, 700 I, I this isn't a very long video but you would want to check to what part of the video you want to clip um, and then I'll go back to my compositing and I will make sure that I choose the encoding presets I want so I, I change this to whatever movie type I want uh, if you're going to do a movie you can also do still images um, choose the preset you want in this case I'm choosing XVID I'm going to turn this up to 8000 um, and we're also going to make sure that we say uh, that we want to encode the audio. I'm just going to choose MP3. Uh, and then uh, choose the name of your file, test2.avi in the case of the XVID. And then I would click animate and it would start animating. I also recommend saving before you click the animate button. Um, and that's it. You can see it rendering out. Um, I get on my computer results of about uh, two frames a second about uh, at the 1080p um, which isn't horrible for for this sort of thing um, probably could be better uh, I'm also you know there's a lot of rendering options you could probably change stuff in here to make things better I'm just going with the default settings here um, but that's it uh, 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I hope you check out my website. It's filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. If you have any questions, technical questions, unless it's a very simple question, uh, please use the IRC channel. If you go to my website, click on the social networking tab uh, and go down to IRC, you'll be brought to the IRC channel. Um, most of the guys in there probably aren't very... Uh, just thinking about the guys that hang out in there. Most of them aren't Blender guys. I'm in there often, not all the time. But that's the best way to get your, your questions answered is in there. The YouTube comments is a horrible place to ask questions unless it's a very simple question. I just want to make that clear. Um, also, I don't always check all the comments. If you're looking at this video a month from now, two months from now, a year from now, I'm probably not even realizing that you're commenting on it uh, because I just get so many comments on many of my videos that I don't have time to check them all. So IRC channel is definitely where you want to ask your questions. So this was kind of a long tutorial, but we did it twice. I try to keep my tutorials short. But I once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with me through this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. And I hope that you have a great day.